Political monotheism is the system that is killing the world. Political monotheism is there's only one God. <coughs> so it's a question of black and white, question of good or evil, be my brother, America says that to England, be my brother or I'll kill you. And that is what has taken over the whole world. And it has swamped the Tao um, religious system. What I love about the Tao is that it makes no claims except to common sense. It boils everything down to its rock bottom fact. Tao means way. It's a spiritual system because it's a metaphor for the cosmos. It's a path, a process. It's the cosmos unfolding and enfolding. It's a concept. I want to just mention that science is a concept. Everything we is, is a concept. It's not come from reason. It's come from all these little hints you've got and these suspicions that certain things are connected. And suddenly you make a leap in the dark and you come out with a theory. And that is your concept. And the proof of it is, if it works, if all the examples fit it afterwards, then it works. That's what all concepts are like. The Tao have got an idea called nothing doing. And what that means is, it doesn't mean that they exactly do nothing, not at all. It means that they let life come to them. They're not ambitious, rushing all around, trying to get advantage over people, you know, climb up in their career of bureaucrats or anything. And, and um, so they wait for circumstances and things to come to them. And of course, they do go out looking, reading poetry, they do go doing what I do, go to art galleries, you do do that, but you're not pushing it. And so then you deal with everything and you just in the end become yourself because you are dealing with your life as it comes past you and you take it, you make use of it. And I like to think that the life that's going on forever, that I'm actually contributing to it. It's part of the Tao, it's part of the path. And, um, and so, you know, whatever you do that's positive is becoming part of the spirit of the whole cosmos. That's how I like to think of it. <laughs> The Tao tells us that we've got the cosmos and that we're part of it and part of the flow. And, um, and also we know about consciousness that nothing happens. We're not, it's what we're conscious of. This is our world. And how is that? And I just think the agent language linking them, linking those two things, is really exciting. Nothing exists until it's named. Until something's named, you don't know what it is. This is, this is why language is so important. We don't know it till it gets a name. Certainly you can't study anything until it's got a name. Think of Aristotle in the school of Plato, naming things, naming things, like a, that's a robin, it's a bird, and we'll call this one a robin, and that one, because it's got a red breast. In the country in England, they call it a ruddock, a robin. And the little brown hedge sparrow, they call a dunnock, because it's dark brown. So you have to give names to things. Even if it's a bird, you have to say what they are. And so Aristotle was doing this in, with Plato, probably, but definitely it was the school of Plato, which Aristotle was a pupil in at one point. And um, they, they were naming things, but also they were naming concepts, working out cause and effect and subdivisions of everything, dividing things into parts and naming the parts, and they're building ideas. And when you do this, you can start to pin down things. I think language, we're called homo sapiens. I think we should be called homo loquax, the talker. 
And, um, and um, so, you know, because it's a much more active thing. You can't actually think if you, didn't, if you weren't able to talk. Um, anyway, so he's talking specifically about this link of three things when you read a Chinese poem. I just, just, you just made me think, by the way, of a Chinese saying that I read in my favorite book. It's in five volumes. It's a story of China, and it's, um, it's called The Story of the Stone. And it's a bit magical in the beginning, but then it's a life of real people. Anyway, never mind. And this boy has a dream, and he goes through an archway, and the archway says, um, oh, God, truth is fiction when the, fic fiction, when the fiction's true. Real is non-real when the non-real's real. And that's what I mean about human beings can represent what is the world by what is not real and so fiction definitely it's an anchor and it, it's it, it's it's a way of of focusing and so yes you're not engaged in non-stop distraction it's true yeah yeah and um oh i'm going to tell you something which me which shows you what a kind person i am i expect but <laughs> but um I was coming home from a concert at the Barbican and I was on the tube and these little boys, well, there were, one of them was about 14, this is at 10 o'clock at night. One would have been 16, the other one 17, maybe 18, maybe they were a year older than they looked. And they were bleeding and they'd, had a, they'd been set upon and beaten up by some kids, strangers. And I started to talk to them, and um, they were really in quite a, sh a state of shock. And they were dressed in, like, little, you know, grey sweatshirt outfits and baseball cap and this kind of thing. And I love young kids of that age, even though they don't know very much. And, um, and, um, and I, because I think they all feel they've got a life and they're doing something, you know. You, it's before they have to decide on what career they're going to do and then they find that they get bored or whatever. But, but at that age, they're really intense about doing things and I really like them. And I started talking to them and I said to them, you know, if you should read. If you read, it will give you power. It will make you really strong. And when you get older, you know, you'll, you'll have well, something to hold on to. You won't get, you'll know who you are, you'll know what you're doing, it'll give you all this power. And, and, and so try to read. And I, then I had to get off the train um, because I was at my station and they were still there. And, I, and the little one was sitting next to me and I said, be sure you tell them to read. And he said, what book? And... <laughs> and I just said, oh, anything, anything. But that is the answer. You've got to start to read, any, uh, you know. I said, oh, darling, I don't have time to talk to you. But anyway, yeah, anyway, so, but it's anything. You must start. Mm -hmm.